Hey, welcome to Linux videos. Topic of this video series is VirtualBox, Vagrant, and CentOS. I'm going to teach you how to go ahead and download VirtualBox, how to download Vagrant, and how to download CentOS if you want it to build your own Vagrant box. I'll also show you how to get a pre-built image that you can use that I built, and how to configure your network for VirtualBox uh, so you have multiple network interfaces and DHCP. I'll show you how to start up a Vagrant machine and do some basic configurations. I'll also provide two more videos at the end on how to build your own Vagrant image using the CentOS distribution. So why? Why do you want to use virtualization? Well, an analogy could be you want to watch two TV shows at once. You might buy two TVs or you might have a TV that provides you with a picture-in-picture -picture display. So if a TV has a picture-in-picture -picture display, you're saving money because you don't have to buy another TV. Well, the same thing with virtualization software. If you run virtualization software on your local PC or your laptop, then you do not need to buy another one. You're saving money. You're saving resources. So there's a major virtualization vendor called VMware. Um, and VMware, their definition of virtualization is it's the single most effective way to reduce IT expenses while boosting efficiency and agility, not just for large enterprises, but for small and mid-sized -size businesses too. VMware virtualization lets you run multiple operating systems and applications on a single server. Well, that's, that's great and all, but I'm more interested in the DevOps opportunities here. How can I use virtualization? as a developer? Well, there's lots of ways. Um, for example, I do a lot of testing on software. I do upgrades. Um, before I do that in a production environment, I'll need to test that in a development environment, make sure that things don't go bad and I have people complaining. So I can spin up some virtual machines on my laptop and I can do uh, test upgrades. You know, it's sort of like a dry run. I can make sure the upgrade works successfully and I can test it on my machine. Um, there's lots of other benefits as well. Um, because it runs on your machine, you don't have to rely on a remote data center to provide connectivity. Say you're traveling or you're in an airplane um, or you just have a bad connection and you, or you want some privacy. Maybe you're developing code that you don't want others to see, so you do it on your local machine. Um, once you have a base image created for Vagrant and VirtualBox, you're free to uh, spin up hundreds of the same image over and over again. Uh, they'll all be built off that same image. And you can save all the new images that you build, or you can just shut them down and destroy them. You'll always have your base image to start over again. So let's get started, and hopefully you'll enjoy this. And I'll show you a quick demo on how I use VirtualBox uh, for some testing of a product called Ansible. I need to uh, spin up four machines, and uh, it's a lot easier to just do this locally on my machine than it is to um, rely on a remote data center. Hang on. So here goes. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to launch terminal. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it pretty, pretty clearly. I'm in my home directory. Um, I'm running this particular uh, development environment under this directory here. Um, so I need uh, four machines to test with. I'm going to do uh, Vagrant up. And what you'll see is four machines launch. I've named my machines Ansible 0, Ansible 2, Ansible 3, and Ansible 4. As these machines launch, you'll see uh, some diagnostic information going by. Here's the image I'm using. It's a CentOS 6.5 image. I have two network interfaces, a NAT and a host only. Vagrant is doing a uh, port forwarding. So when I want to SSH locally to this machine, uh, it's actually connecting to 2222. Um, I have some pre-boot customizations in place. Since they've already been done, it's not going to do them again. It's going to check them, though. Um, it goes to machine 2. It's pretty quick. This one, uh, machine 2, has uh, three ports set up for port forwarding, port 80 port 443 and port 22. Basically that means if I want to run a web server on Ansible 2, it would run on port 80 
but on my local machine in my web browser, if I wanted to see it, I would go to localhost colon 8080. And the same thing with 443, I would go to localhost colon 8443. The third machine only has one port forwarding set up. And you'll see the fourth machine go by pretty soon. You also notice that uh, it says here remote connection disconnected retrying. That's because the machine is booting as uh, Vagrant is trying to connect, which is normal. It takes a couple of seconds for a machine to boot up in VirtualBox. So, when this is done, I'll have four virtual machines running on my laptop that I can use for a development environment. I don't have to rely on a uh, remote data center. If I do a vagrant status, you'll see that those four machines are running. I can uh, SSH into them. You can see here this host is called Ansible Zero. It has an IP address of uh, 192.168.33.100 and 10215. It has two interfaces, uh, external and then the internal host only interface. I can uh, connect to the other server. Oh, there is no Ansible 1. There's an Ansible 2, 3, and 4. So I can connect to Ansible 2. And again, it's a different host and the IP information is different. It's 192.168.33.2. It still has a uh, external IP of 10.02.15, which is fine. All three of these hosts, or all four of these hosts, will be able to connect to the outside world, download software, do updates, whatever I need them to do. They can also ping each other. I can uh, ping Ansible 3 from here. I can ping Ansible 4 from here. I can ping Ansible 0 from here. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and log out of this. I'm going to uh, shut them down. Uh, Vagrant will gracefully shut these down if there was any init scripts to uh, stop applications like Apache or Tomcat or any other long running processes they would be shut down properly before the virtual machine was powered off. And the configuration file for this particular development environment is just a text file just like the uh, other Vagrant files that I'll show you later. And I'll show you this one right now. This is what a Vagrant configuration file looks like. You can ignore everything that's in comments or blue. It's just comments. You can see that uh, I'm giving all my VMs 100% execution cap of the CPU. They all have two CPUs. They all have one gig of memory. The first machine is called Ansible Zero. On the private network, I've given an IP address that's uh, dot one hundred. Uh, when the machine boots to provision it, I run this little uh, bash script here. I'm overriding the uh, the memory here, with two fifty six and one CPU. Ansible Two has the port forwarding for eighty four four three. They all have twenty two by default, so that's not set up individually for all these. Now let's just say I needed to add a fifth machine. I could just copy these four lines here and then paste them. And I can change any instance here that says uh, four to say five. So let's uh, substitute Ansible four for Ansible five. And there we go. I'll save this file. I'm going to change that IP too. We don't want an IP conflict. And if I do a Vagrant up now, you'll see five VMs are actually started instead of just four. So you got zero, two, three, four, and five. So uh, I don't want to make you go through watching these boot up again.
I'm going to stop this video and I will show you a, another example of how Ansible, I'm sorry, how Vagrant um, can be used. So let's pretend that I need a uh, development environment to run on my local laptop that has five application servers, four database servers, and a load balancer switch. Totally possible. And I'm going to show you how to do that at the end of this video series. We'll create this environment. 